Hey everybody, this is Nathan the Alvatech here, and today we're going to be looking at the release preview of Windows 8. I know I'm a little late to the game with Windows 8 because it's the release preview and the release preview has been out for a while, but I say it's better to be late than to never be in the game at all. We're going to be looking at the release preview today via a program called VirtualBox. VirtualBox is an open source program that allows you to run virtual machines within it that contain OS's such as Windows XP, Windows 7, and in this case Windows 8. So now with the magic of editing, we're going to switch screens to my computer in 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Alright guys, so now this is the release preview for Windows 8. It's pretty smooth in terms of response, uh, but then again, I'm not using a tablet, I'm using a desktop to record this. Uh, so, this is running via VirtualBox from Oracle, which is a open source program that allows you to run virtual machines uh, that can run several operating systems. So, so in essence, you can have several operating systems running on one computer at the same time. Uh, acting on what they think are different computers. What's really different between this and the consumer preview? Well, I really can't tell you except for these live tiles weren't working before uh, in the consumer preview. These weren't loading as fast as they are now. They weren't loading in real time. It just didn't seem like some of this stuff was ready for for delivery. But Microsoft seems like they have really gone the extra mile and have tweaked some things that should have been tweaked from the beginning in my opinion. Uh, but what you're looking at now is the Metro style interface. If you didn't know, uh, Microsoft has decided to go along with a universal operating system for desktops and tablets. Uh, but in my opinion, and in the opinion of a lot of other people here on YouTube and uh, bloggers in general, is that Windows 8 seems like it's more or less meant for touch. It doesn't look like it's meant much for the traditional desktop feel. However, they have included a desktop app here that does bring things a little bit more desktop friendly. As you can see, this looks a little bit more like the desktop that we all know and love from Windows. However, there's one very special thing that you'll notice is missing. There's no start menu. They have eliminated the start menu, and I actually recently read an article as to why they did this. Apparently, Microsoft feels that because most people, uh, after having some survey done or some kind of study done, they, they found out that people are prone to pinning their programs on the taskbar. So there really is no need for the traditional Windows start menu. The, the people aren't using it to get to their programs. They're, use, they're taking it from the start menu, and they're pinning it to their desktops. Uh, and the taskbars. So, while I understand Microsoft's move to get rid of the start menu, it's going to cause a lot of, I wouldn't call it anger, but more frustration on the on the side of the user. The user is not going to know where to go for the programs is because they're going to be so used to the Windows start menu. Um, but, what's kind of cool is because there's nothing here, you see how there's a little start thing that came when I went to the bottom left corner. Well, that's their version of the start menu, and they figured that people are going to have to use Metro in order to get to their programs. Uh, and you can put tiles from the desktop app in Metro. You can actually pin them to to the start menu. Uh, an example of this is Google Chrome. When you go to Google Chrome, it takes you back to the desktop, but it actually launches Chrome within the desktop. And here you can see the... Chrome working on Windows 8. So let's go back to the start screen. Another way you can get back to the start screen, by the way, from any app is if you take your cursor and go to the bottom right corner, you'll get your little chimes bar and you can go click the start menu. In this case, it took you back to where you were, but if I click it from the desktop, it'll take me to the start menu. That's another way you can get to the start menu. Let's go ahead and check out the photos. Photos is really cool. Um, if you have your Facebook linked to your uh, Windows, or I'm sorry, they're calling it the Microsoft ID now, not Windows Live ID, it's the Microsoft ID, uh, you can get a live thing of all of your different photo albums that you have on your Facebook. So this is a good way to share your Facebook photos with your friends. Um, and yeah, so let's go back. And you can also do something straight from photos. You just put it in the computer itself, not necessarily through Facebook, uh, from your SkyDrive, from Flickr, and you can add devices such as a camera that you can see all of your photos from there. So let's go ahead and go back to the Start menu. Uh, another one I want to show you was the Store. 
Now I was having issues with the store earlier. For some reason, it doesn't want to show me a particular app, which is this one. Uh, great apps for Windows 8. Here's where to start. When I clicked on this before, it hung there and said gave me an error saying that yeah, the store is having issues. So let's try it again and see if it gives me the same issue. Again, I don't know what it is with Windows and these little dots. Um, there's different ways you can see these dots displayed on your screen. Uh, when you're installing a, an app, you see them up here. When it's loading, you see them going in a circle. So I really don't know what Microsoft's beef is with the apps. With the dots, I mean. And it doesn't seem to want to load. So let's go ahead and go back to Start Menu. Um, but let's actually go back to the store and... How do I? Let's go home. No, there we go. So let's go try loading a game. Uh, I think I think honestly the Microsoft Store is down right now for some strange reason. Uh, because every time, yeah, see we were unable to connect to the store. I think they're just boggled down because people are trying out the preview. I'm not really sure what's going on, but anyway, it work. It's cool when it works. So let's go into mail now at the beginning when you go to mail you're prompted to actually enter your credentials for your email and it works across all platforms I I've I've successfully linked uh, multiple gmail accounts with this inbox so now I can see all of the different things that I have in my inbox and I can just click on this and oh. Ah, you can click on it and you can see what's going on with that email. So, pretty nice inbox. I like the user interface. I like the Metro interface. It's very universal, I think, with Windows Phone as well. Next thing we're going to look at is maps. So, I've already gone ahead and um, gotten directions from Los Angeles to Newport Beach because I live in California right next to those two cities and um, what's cool about this is you get a visual map here that you can zoom in and out you know if you have a scroll wheel you can zoom in and out which is really nice and then here at the top you get actual written directions on how to get to the place uh, but Microsoft tells you right here that there's no guarantee that it is made regarding accuracy of these directions for any reason including construction projects traffic or other events so uh, they're using a company called Navtech to get their to get their directions across and of course they're using the Bing Maps so it's actually pretty nice. The the it's very similar to iOS, although I do I haven't figured out a way to get different views on here. Uh, oh, map style, aerial view. Ah, this is what I was looking for. They calling it aerial view. I'm used to having it called satellite from iOS. Now we'll go to the People app. People app is uh, essentially the social networking app. You can link your Twitter, your Facebook, your Google Plus, your YouTube, etc. And you can see all of the different people that you have contacts with here in the People app. Um, let's go to What's New. When you go to the What's New app, you'll see a live feed of all of the different uh, social networks that you've successfully linked your account to. So let's see if this works because it's kind of being buggy today ah there we go so uh, this isn't exactly updating oh there it goes there it updated so here we can see you know you can scroll and see different different things that are happening on your social networks which is really cool really convenient I don't know if I like this interface necessarily I kinda like the vertical scrolling interface versus the horizontal but that's just personal opinion and then we go to the me section of the people tab and I'm not exactly sure what happens here. ah okay so this tells you all of the different things you've done on your uh, social network so it also gives you notifications from your different social networks so you can see all of your different notifications that you've gotten from your several social networks. So let's go back to the start menu. Next we're going to look at news, another app that they have tried to get across. Um, I'm actually not sure what's going on here. I don't think this was in the consumer preview. This is a release preview type thing. So let's wait for this to load a little bit.
as you can see there's still a lot of work to do before the final release is gonna come out because it just seems like all these are really slow ah so we have something similar to flipboard for iOS and Android we got kind of a magazine style thing and when you click on story it'll take you to that story and you can read all about whatever it is ah that's that's nice I like that and I'm assuming you can configure yep you can configure several news articles that you can see so ah so if I type in CNET for example let's see if it intelligently picks up CNET ah and it did so all things CNET so if I want to see just CNET stuff I just click on the name and it takes me to all the CNET stuff so that's pretty intuitive that's actually score points for Microsoft right there that's really nice I've wanted something akin to uh, to Flipboard but for the desktop so that's that's nice so I'm looking forward to that so that's it guys I can't really show you anything else I've shown you all I can with what I have installed right now this is Windows 8 this is pretty much what it's gonna look like when it comes out unless Microsoft does some kind of drastic change to their UI which I don't think they will now in my opinion am I gonna pick this up mmm possibly uh, I might pick this up because I can I I am tech savvy enough to know how to use it but for the average user um, possibly not and if you are gonna pick this up you'll probably pick it up on a tablet not a desktop I'm Nathan Dialvatech and this has been Windows 8 release preview running on VirtualBox. Hope you enjoyed this video. Like and subscribe for more, and we'll see you again later.